Hello everyone and thank you for joining me for the launch of the National Children's Mental Health Strategy 2021. Firstly, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners on all the lands on which we're meeting today and pay my respects to the elders past, present and emerging. I'm very happy to be living here on Wajak Noongarbuja in Perth in Western Australia. And I'm grateful that this country has been so well looked after that I get to live here and raise my children. So this is me. I'm from the Pilbara region in Western Australia, although I grew up in Perth. But my homelands are in the Pilbara region around Marble Bar, and I'm a Palku woman. And of course, knowing who you are and where you come from is really important to mental health. And so are our generational stories of our families. So this is my grandmother and mum, and this is me with my first child. And I think that the foundations to our mental health actually start here with our families. So as my grandmother holds my mum, my mum holds me, and I hold my first child. And this is establishing good mental health and well-being and resilience throughout the generations. So why is it important to focus on infant and children in particular? And I'm really pleased that the government decided to do a zero to 12 strategy because this is a, an area of focus that hasn't received a lot of attention in recent years. At this point, I also just want to thank everyone who's been involved in the development of the strategy. Uh, it was a lot of hard work for everyone involved, and I think that they've done a really fantastic job. So why focus on, on children? Well, we know, and the science is in fact very clear, that the early years offer both the greatest opportunity for de development, but also present a time of considerable risk. So things really can and do go wrong in early childhood, and this sets kids on a path for poor mental health and well-being down the track, often not manifest until uh, the uh, youth period or in, in adulthood, but the origins of this distress um, actually start in childhood. So this is a time that we have to focus on really building our mental health and well-being and our resilience uh, if we're going to actually have uh, healthy development later on down the track. So we need to focus on building sturdy brains through nurturing relationships, through good experiences that promote growth and development, through healthy environments, and through really promoting those strong social and emotional development mental milestones, which are actually critical for our development later. And of course, if we do all of that, then this will establish the foundations for well-being and resilience throughout our lifespan. And if by chance adversity does, uh, we do face adversity later on down the track, we will be much more able to handle these sorts of issues if we've got these really strong foundations. So some of the considerations that we also have to think about when we're looking at mental health and well-being is that most of our mental health challenges or disorders actually have their origins somewhere in childhood, sometimes in infancy or in very early childhood. Most disorders don't really just start up in adolescence. There are some, of course, that do, but for many, some of their origins or risk factors are present early on. We also know that there are many risk and protective factors that we, we know about. We know how to deal with them. We know what uh, some of the things that uh, will promote the protective factors and also some of the things that we can do to try and reduce risk. And we can identify some of this within our population. There's an increasing evidence base for really effective interventions from infancy right through to adulthood that will support healthy development and also promote healing and recovery. And of course, if you intervene early when the brain is more malleable, before things have become permanent in terms of changes to brain development and structure and function, then this is much easier to intervene at this stage. So the earlier we intervene in life, the earlier we intervene in distress and in the onset of illness, the chances for better recovery um, are much, much greater. So the cost benefit for early intervention is compelling. A small amount of investment in childhood to get kids back on track is going to yield much better outcomes than trying to intervene much later down the track when things may have caused permanent changes to the brain or become entrenched and more difficult to shift. 
Of course, some of the concerns about the service system that have been around for some time now is that there has been a lack of development and investment in clinical services for children, particularly the under 12s, over many decades. There are also very few specialised service, services that can deal with some of the particular issues that develop in infants and in young children. There are lots of gaps in our service system as well, particularly for those children who may have some high risk groups such as children in out-of-home care, as well as those children who find themselves in the juvenile justice system. Many of those children are really at risk for later mental health challenges if they don't have them already within the systems of care they find themselves in. We also know there are large gaps in mental health services in rural and remote locations, and certainly in some of our Aboriginal um, communities that uh, live in very remote circumstances. We have currently a very poorly trained and fragmented service system. We, we have uh, a lack of uh, staff and development and support. Um, and of course, what we've seen is a rapid rise in demand for mental health services for children and, and young people in recent years, and even more so in the COVID years. And this has far exceeded the services capacity to actually meet any sort of current levels of need. So we've got a long way to go, but hopefully this strategy will address some of these concerns by getting in early, having a much stronger collaborative approach from primary care right through to the specialist service system and promote that sort of um, focus on children's mental health and well-being for everybody. So just to leave you with something a little bit more positive, we know that if we give children the best start, the right start in life and development, then they are going to grow into happy, healthy adults. And although we uh, have many stories to tell, wouldn't it be nice if we could tell the best story of all? And that is we put in the investment that was required, we built the systems of care that we needed, and it didn't matter who you were or where you lived or who your family was, every child got the chance to achieve the best possible well-being. And that would be a great story to tell. Thank you.